Once we could count, one, two, three, four, etc., we started to describe numbers as, say, big or smaller, even or odd, etc. Once we have a mathematical object, the next step is often to describe its characteristics. This usually requires an introduction of more vocabulary. Right now, we have a new notion, the notion of a set. Our task is to describe its properties. Let's begin. The most basic thing we need to know is how to tell when two sets are the same and when they're different. This is, as usual, the notion of equality. Let's start with A and B being sets. Definition. A is equal to B if and only if for all x in A, x is in B, and for all objects x in B, x is in A. Here I've introduced a quantifier that you may not have seen before. This upside down A symbol means for all, or for every, or for each depending on the context. So here's the translation of this definition. A is equal to B exactly when every element of A is an element of B and vice versa. Every element of B is an element of A. Example, say the set A is described in set builder notation, x is going to be some natural number such that x is prime and x is strictly less than 5. b is going to be some integer such that x is positive, x is not 1, and x divides 6. So what are the primes that are less than 5? a is going to be the set that contains 2 and 3. And what are the integers that are positive? Not 1, and divide 6. Without remainder, these are the integers 2 and 3. Every element of a is an element of b, Every element of B is an element of A, and of course, as we expect, we get A is equal to B. Let's talk about how we compare sets, much like one would compare numbers. So here, um, A and B are going to be sets. We're going to define what it means to be a subset. Definition, A is a subset of B if for all elements x in A, x is in B. The notation for this is going to be this symbol here, or we can write it the other way if we reverse the order of the sets. For example, this set, JAM, is a subset of this larger set with all of these letters. And one thing that I want you to note, which may not be clear because, frankly, it's a little confusing, the empty set and the set A will be a subset of the set A, no matter what A is. The empty set, which contains nothing, is considered a subset of all other sets. Let's get a little bit more precise with this definition. Definition. A is a strict or proper subset of another set B, provided A is a subset of B and A is not B. The notation here is similar to before, except for the subset notation, there's going to be a strike through the horizontal line. Our same example as before is an example of a proper subset. You may be thinking um, that there's a relationship between equality and um, being a subset. 
and you, you're correct. Equality of two sets is equivalent, it turns out, to them being subsets of each other simultaneously. So A is equal to B is equivalent to A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. And this means that a way to prove equality uh, is to prove both containments, as in showing that A is contained in B as a subset and B is contained in A as a subset. Let's talk about cardinality. Much like numbers, this is a question of how big? So let A be a set. Definition. The cardinality of A is, here I'm going to introduce the notation as well. So um, this is how we write it, and I'll talk about this in a second, but the cardinality of A is the number of objects in the set A. Here we'll note that we're using the notation for cardinality is the same as the absolute value. And I've also snuck in a, a new uh, symbol, which is a colon followed by an equal sign. And this means defined to be. So A with the absolute values on either side is defined to be the number of objects in the set A. And here we can um, be a little bit more descriptive. A is said to be a finite set if the cardinality of A is less than infinity. So if there's a finite number of things in the set, then the set is called finite. And similarly, as you expect, A is infinite if the cardinality of A is infinity. Example, the cardinality of the set that includes the letters J, A, and M is 3, and this means that it is a finite set. Example, the cardinality of the empty set that contains nothing is 0. This makes it also an example of a finite set. And the cardinality of the integers is infinity. There are an infinite number of integers, and this makes it an example of an infinite set. Now that we have an idea of the size of sets, we can start counting things with regards to sets. In particular, I want to count subsets. Let's look for a second at our set um, that contains three letters, J, A, and M. I want to figure out how many subsets this particular set has, and I can organize this by cardinality. So for example, say I have cardinality over here and the subsets over here. Well, uh, this, the whole set has a cardinality of three, so we expect there to be maybe uh, subsets of cardinality zero, one, two, and three. And we can organize it this way. So what are the subsets of this set of cardinality zero? Well, there is only one. It is the empty set. What are the subsets of cardinality one? Well, you can take the individual letters. Here they are. What about of cardinality two? Well, we can combine two letters. I think these are the only ways that you can do that. And then you can see the subset of cardinality three, which is the whole set. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, there must be a systematic way of doing this. And um, part of combinatorics, and the beauty of combinatorics, is just looking at something the right way so that we can count them more easily. So the first thing I want to remind you of is that sets are defined by what's in and what's out. So we are going to um, encode this in bi binary. So we're starting with the set that contains these three letters, J, A, and M. And one is going to mean in, and zero is going to mean out. So what does zero comma zero comma zero mean? Well, it means J is out. A is out, 
and M is out. So this corresponds to the empty set, since both J, A, and M are not in there. We can also play around with other things. This string, 0, 1, 1, will correspond to J being out, A being in, and M being in. And so this corresponds to the set A comma N. And you can see that we can play this game. Um, every single set, for every single individual element of the set, every single subset will either have that element in or out. So we can exhaust all the possibilities by just listing all the different ways that each element can be in or out of the set. In general, what we're going to have is three numbers. The choices for these three numbers can be either 0 or 1. So there's two choices for each. And this corresponds to all the possibilities. Uh, there are two choices for J, either in or out two choices for A, either in or out, and two choices for M, either in or out. And this is going to be 8, otherwise known as 2 to 3. I'm doing this suggestively because this, as you uh, might recall, is the cardinality of the set in question. So here's our theorem along these lines that uh, confirms and generalizes what we've just kind of heuristically figured out. So let A be a set, and in particular let A be a set with finite cardinality, a finite set. Then the number of subsets is equal to 2 raised to the power. That is the cardinality of that set. Before we do a quick example of this, um, I do want to introduce a notion of the power set. This is what we're secretly exploring. Definition. The power set of A is the set of all subsets of A. The notation for this is 2 to the A, which normally would not make sense because what is 2 raised to a set? But this is, uh, we're introducing this as notation that makes sense. This is representing the power set of A. And uh, what that theorem that we just talked about says is that the cardinality of the power set of A is going to be 2 raised to the cardinality of A. So just to remind you, uh, this guy is the power set of A. Uh, these two absolute values just means the cardinality. And then this is the cardinality of A. So this is a symbolic way to write down the theorem that we just learned. All right, now let's just do an example. Example, how many subsets of the set that contains the integers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are there? Well, now we don't have to write them down. The cardinality of the power set, which is the, the set of subsets, is 2 to the cardinality of A, which is 2 to the 5, which is 32. In the next lesson, we're going to be talking about doing operations on our sets.